everyone, and thank you so much for joining the Needy Med special topic webinar, 10 Myths About Raynaud's Phenomenon. Get the facts for a warmer, more comfortable life. My name is Carla. I'm the Director of User Engagement at Needy Meds. And before we get started, I'll make a few suggestions so you can make the most out of today's presentation. First of all, you can type any questions you may have into that question section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Just know we will reserve answering the questions until the end. If we don't have the time to answer your question, we will follow up with you by email. But of course, we will also provide you with the contact information for Raynaud's Association and Needy Meds at the end. As you may have seen already, you can find both of our PowerPoint slide decks and other materials we thought you'd be interested in in that handout section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing on the Needy Meds YouTube channel. So let's get started quickly with what is Needy Meds. Needy Meds is a national nonprofit founded more than two decades ago by a retired family physician, Dr. Richard Sagal, and a medical social worker, Libby Overly. That's our mission statement, but simply put, Needy Meds connects people to programs that will help them afford their healthcare expenses. And we do that free and anonymously through our website, needymeds.org, and helpline, 1-800-503-6897. So here's a snapshot of our homepage. I always really like to put that up because our website is the face of our organization, and it gives me a chance to point out a few resources you may be interested in. First of all, if you are interested in finding ways to save on your healthcare expenses, click on the Healthcare Savings tab. If you're interested in signing up to receive our monthly newsletter, ordering educational materials, and seeing what other webinars are scheduled, check out that Education tab. You can also see other upcoming webinars by visiting the calendar of events on the bottom right hand of our homepage. Oh, and I jumped ahead because as you saw, there's a little box now at the top right hand of the screen. That's around our YouTube link or icon. I mentioned that this webinar is being recorded. All of our webinars are recorded, converted into videos, and put on the Needy Meds YouTube channel. Check that out, and I suggest also subscribing. That way you'll, no you'll be notified when new content, such as webinars, presentations, and videos are added. And then on the bottom right-hand side where is that calendar of events where you can check out upcoming webinars as well. So as you saw a couple of slides ago, the Needy Med's mission is to educate and empower those seeking affordable health care. And we really define that education portion of that mission in two ways. One, by educating people about Needy Meds and the resources we offer. And two, by letting them know about other reputable, reliable, and accurate resources about healthcare topics and diagnoses, which is why we are so pleased to have our guests from the Raid Nodes Association here with us today. So first, let me tell you just a little bit about Raynaud's Association. They are a national nonprofit whose mission is to provide support and education to the millions of sufferers of Raynaud's phenomenon and exaggerated sensitivity to cold temperatures. And this webinar is perfect timing because October is actually Raynaud's Awareness Month. So it's my pleasure to introduce our guest, Jan Netty. Excuse me, Jan Nitty. Jan is a board member of Raynaud's Association and a leader of the Scleroderma Tampa Area Support Group. Jan is an expert professionally, as you'll see, but also personally, as she was diagnosed with scleroderma and secondary Raynaud's in 2002. She's the author of Be Your Best Advocate, Improving Your Life with Scleroderma and Autoimmune Disease, and holds a master's degree in public health and a bachelor's in biology and medical technology. So with that resume, you can see why we are so pleased to have Jan with us today to share her expertise. 
So bear with me while hopefully seamlessly, I will go ahead and pass the mic and the screen to Jan. Now, as J Jan grabs that screen and opens up her PowerPoint slide deck in slideshow mode, as she's getting to that, I will remind everybody, perfect, that you can ask questions in the question section of that GoToWebinar control panel. So one thing before I pass the mic and the screen to Jan, uh, there is a handout section on your GoToWebinar control panel to find our PowerPoint slide decks if you're interested, as well as other materials. And that should be towards the bottom of that GoToWebinar control panel. Thanks so much. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic to Jan. Enjoy the presentation, everyone, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Carly. I always say Carly. Is it Carly or Carla? It's so funny. It is technically Carla, but I have a lot of friends and family members that call me Carly. So I like Carly. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me today. It's always a pleasure um, meeting and seeing you again every year. And um, I'd like to thank everybody for calling in today. And yes, um, I'm a board member of the Brain Nodes Association, and we are here to help educate and support patients that deal with Raynaud's phenomenon. Now you may have heard it differently um, described as Raynaud's syndrome, I'm um, having a Raynaud's attack, and those are all normal um, nomenclature for nomenclature for Raynaud's phenomenon. So if somebody says, oh, I'm having a Raynaud's attack or I have Raynaud's syndrome, they're all, those words are all used um, in any way which you would like to. You don't have to have a special word to describe Raynaud's. But before we get started, I'd like to just take you through, and I don't have a slide for this, so forgive me for that, but I'd like to take you through um, a system in our body that is actually quite unique, and it's used to help us prepare for when we're um, either exposed to a threat or we feel stressed. And that is your automatic, auto, autonomic nervous system. <clears throat> One of the um, benefits of the, of the system is that it gets your body prepared by um, re increasing your blood pressure. It can, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just one second, please. Okay, so um, anyway, the autonomic nervous system has three branches that our body uses every day. One of the branches is called the sympathetic nervous system, which you may have heard it called the flight or fight response. And what happens during that, it's actually triggered by um, your body, um, by something that you've been exposed to. Either you need to engage in a threat or run. Some of the symptoms that you might have with um, a uh, flight or fight response would be you increase your heart rate, your pupils dilate, veins in your skin constrict to send more blood to the core to protect your vital organs, organs, and you might lose some blood to the extremities to keep warm. Now these reactions are all normal, but with the case of Raynaud's, we actually get stuck in the sympathetic nervous system. And um, what happens is we get stuck where our body is blood flow to the extremities is compromised even more, and that can trigger, that is the same result that happens with a Raynaud's attack. Your body is exposed to stress or some kind of a, it seems like there's a threat, <clears throat> and blood flow will leave the extremities to protect the vital organs, and your hands or your extremities might go through a phase of being cold and on, um, it may take a while for them to come back. <clears throat> now I'd like to move on to myth number one. Myth number one, and you'll have to excuse me, I'm not being, I'm not able to change the PowerPoint. Carly, can you assist for one moment, please? Absolutely, and I will let everybody know that Jan and I did practice this. So in the event she was having trouble clicking through hers, because when we did the practice, right, Jan, we had a little bit of technical trouble. So um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can bring up your PowerPoint slide deck. And can you guys see that now? Bear with me. Let me pull it back. Hang on one second. 
Can you guys see my screen now? I can see it. <clears throat> Great. So what I'll do, um, and if the audience doesn't mind, is Jen, I'll let you do the speaking, and then you just tell me when to click through the PowerPoint. I'm happy to do that. Yes, we've always seemed to have this problem. I don't know why. We so, do, but I'll much. let the audience know because because we seem to encounter this, we were well prepared today. So you yes. just tell me when you want me to forward, forward the slides. Thanks so much. Okay, so myth number one, Raynaud's is a rare disease. It's so funny because a lot of people have never heard of Raynaud's before, but it is not a rare disease. In order for something to be categorized as a rare disease, it needs to have fewer than 200,000 cases uh, people in the U.S. or one in 1,500 people. Well, there is five to 10 percent of the U.S. population that has Raynaud's, which comes out to 15 million to 30 million. That's a very large percentage. So we are not a rare disease, even though people may not have ever heard of it. Us, and again, one tenth are unaware that they have it. <clears throat> so, for example, you might meet people that um, say, "My hands are always cold," or when I run. My hands turn different colors. They have Raynaud's, um, and they probably have primary Raynaud's, and they just don't have a name for it. So that's where education really comes in, as educating people that this does have a name, and there is things you can do for it. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> Myth number two, there is a formal test to diagnose Raynaud's. You know, diagnosis of Raynaud's is really based on, on your symptoms, but, and there is no formal test. However, there are tests that can help with the diagnosis. For example, example there's a thermal imaging test, which I have had before, where um, they show its heat sensitivity to your hands. However, it's not 100%, and you have to have an attack when you're getting the test. So unless you're having an attack, it can't show that you're having um, any decrease in um, in your hands sensitivity to cold, um, to any, to, to heat. <clears throat> now the other one is called the cold water trigger test and that's when they take your hands and they may put it into an ice bucket to see if you have a reaction. I did a conference once um, for the Department of Health and we had a bucket set up there and people would come in and they would put their hands in the bucket and it was freezing cold and they would come out and some people did turn ghostly white, which we're gonna go over in a little bit on, which is a sign of uh, Raynaud syndrome. <clears throat> Another test that's being used out there is a nail fold um, capilloscopy. And what that really is, is the doctor takes a, um, a magnifying glass and he'll look at your, your fingernails, he'll look at the, all the areas around the fingernail to look for any abnormalities in the capillaries or any enlargement or, deformat or um, deformities in the capillaries. When I was first diagnosed with Raynaud's, my rheumatologist actually did that and he explained to me what he was looking for and it actually does work um, as, as a diagnostic tool. The last one, which many of you might be aware of, is called an anti-nuclear antibody blood test. And that is a simple blood test that can tell you whether or not you have been exposed to any autoimmune antibodies. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, Raynaud's can be secondary or primary, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. However, um, a good screening test, even though it's not declared as a screening test, is the ANA antibody test. Anybody have any questions about testing? There are no specific questions related to testing. Obviously, a few other questions come in, but I think they'll be answered later on in the presentation since I've already read through it. Thank you, though. Wonderful. Okay, let's go to the next slide, myth number three. Raynaud's only affects fingers and toes. Well, this is not true. Um, I can testify to that. I have Raynaud's in my nose, in my nostrils, believe it or not. And when I get cold, they get aggravated and I have pain in my nose. So uh, as you can see from the slide, it can affect any extremity, your ears, your nose, your tongue, your breasts, and even your sex organs. Um, so when you're looking, when, you're, um, when, you're, when you have pain in an area that you think might have brain nodes, you should take a look at it and look for color changes or actually even um, document your pain in that area. Maybe, it's, you, maybe it needs to be looked at by the doctor. Next slide. 
<laughs> Myth number four, Raynaud's sufferers have poor circulation. So, you know, it's so funny because there actually is um, a disease out there for poor circulation. Raynaud's is not that disease. We're going to talk about that in just another slide or so. But 90% of people have normal vascular functions and circulation. And this is one of the reasons why it can go misdiagnosed because um, your, your, your vascular functions show up normal and you have no circulatory issues. And then all of a sudden you're getting Raynaud's. So if a doctor says you have poor circulation or somebody says that, you might want to just make sure that um, you're not having high thresholds, I'm sorry, low thresholds for flight and fight, meaning you have every time you have a response that stresses you out, you're having a Raynaud's attack. So um, these are things to look for for circulation, and but we do not have poor circulation um, for, for primary Raynaud's. Next slide. <clears throat> Myth number five, Raynaud's is only allergy, is an allergy to the cold. Again, um, it is not an allergy to a cold. There is a disease called cold urticaria, which is triggered by cold, but you break out in rashes and you're itchy. Um, and Raynaud's, you're not having any allergic reaction to the cold. Your body is really triggering to the cold, which we're gonna go over. We're gonna talk about triggers in just a minute. Next slide. Raynaud's, this is myth number six, Raynaud's is merely a nuisance, not a medical condition. Condition. Okay, so, you know, your doctor should really talk to you if you have Raynaud's about your lifestyle. And um, it's a conditioned response. They probably don't know that it is. But what that means is that um, if you have primary or secondary Raynaud's, you could be at, you, you, your, your responses could be because you're having a response to something that is conditional, meaning if you're under a lot of stress all the time, that could be causing your vein nodes to be aggravated. Um, so you really need to understand your triggers so that you can talk to your doctor about them. There's also a lot of misunderstanding from our families and our friends. They may see you as somebody that's complaining or, um, and that might get you even more upset. So again, we wanna make sure we educate we're educated on Raynaud's as well as educating our family and our friends so they understand what is going on and that it is um, a medical condition. They may not be aware of the fact. And last again is the avoid the attack. So I know that when I go into the supermarket, I'm gonna be exposed to different temperature changes. So I make sure that I have with me hand warmers, a jacket, anything that's gonna help me from having a Raynaud's attack. Um, there's all different ways that you can have stress in your family, in your in your body, from your friends, your family, work. It could be many different things. If you can recognize your stressors, so that when you have them, you can find alternative techniques to help you can deal with the stress. And then lifestyle changes. I moved to Florida from New Jersey. However, I thought I was getting away from the cold, and the air conditioning can be just as bad. So it's really your surroundings that you're in. And if you can educate your educate people on what surroundings works best for you, then they can help accommodate you and you can still enjoy a quality of life even though you have rain nodes and you might be subject to cold and um, to stressors. <clears throat> so some little tips here for you are <clears throat> always dress in layers or you can actually um, Keep your ear lobes and your nose warm. What I do is I wear a little um, a neck warmer. Um, keep your core warm and your back of your neck warm. And any and add any clothing to your car that you might need during the day. So proper planning is really one of the things you need to do when you're dealing with rain nodes, and um, and that it is a medical condition. Next slide. Okay, myth number seven, Raynaud's episodes always involves the patriotic white, blue color changes, red color changes. Well, I can tell you that the common um, sequence of color changes is white to blue to red due to the blood flow changes. However, you may not see them in that pattern. I get attacks where I stay in purple um, for the longest period of time and then I go gray, which is more of a um, milder attack. And then I get spotted um, pink and red patterns. 
Now, one thing to notice about this, which I think is very, very important, is when you have a rain nose attack and your hands start to change colors, you don't want to stay in that condition for a long period of time because there's tissue um, breakdown during that. When you have lack of oxygen to a tissue, you'll have damage. So you want to get out of that rain nose attack as fast as you possibly can. What I do is if I'm in a cold store and it gets to the point where I'm starting to have a rain nose attack, I step out of the store and I'll sit in the warm, um, the warm air for a while and then I'll go back in at least to get myself out of the rain nose attack. Or I'll just, uh, if I don't have access to getting outside, I'll wrap myself up in a very warm blanket, whatever is in the store, if I have to, I'll add onto my body and I'll try and stop that rain nose attack. So it's really important to keep an eye on them. Don't let them, don't let your fingers stay in that state of, of um, low oxygen and really be on top of it and know that you know, it's, it should go away. If you're having rain nose attacks that are lasting more than a few minutes, you need to call the doctor and you might have to go on medication to help with that. So know your pattern, patterns and be prepared for everything. Next slide. Okay, so let's talk about treatment. Um, the myth of the number eight is that the only treatment is to stay warm. Well, that's not true. There are different medications out there, and I think I've tried basically every medication out there for brain nodes, so I'll share with you um, some evidence as far as I'm concerned. These medications increase blood flow to the extremities. So their calcium channel blockers are known to do that, um, and also erectile dysfunction drugs. When I first started with brain nodes, I had a bad infection on one of my fingers, and the doctor gave me Viagra. And I couldn't understand it. I'm like, Viagra, that's used for men. And she said, no, um, it really is good for the extremities. And I have to say, this was before Sudenafil was out, that the Viagra really helped make a difference. So if you're a female and you have um, problems with your rain nodes and you feel that you're having little ulcers that might come on your fingers, you can ask the doctor about Sudenafil. It's actually a Vi Viagra derivative. And there's also Cialis, which is another um, erectile dysfunction drug being used to help with Raynaud's. There's ACE inhibitors out there, va Vasotec, and there actually there's, um, there's other medication that's not listed here, like Botox, for example, and then there's an IV drug um, that you can get in the hospital. It's called Iliprost. For more severe cases of Raynaud's, which would be, I would fit into that category, um, there's a surgery that's done, which is called the digital sympathectomy, and it's really for severe cases. And what they do is they actually go into the fingers and they manipulate the sympathetic nervous system so that they can go in and cause it to always be um, pushing blood flow out. There are self-help help techniques. I do a lot of yoga and breathing, and um, I help myself by getting out of the situation as soon as I possibly can, as I mentioned in the store. And then there's natural and holistic remedies, which are not clinically ver verified because the sample size might be too small for this to be significant. However, I've used antidepressants to help with my Raynaud's and um, there are other drugs there. You just have to make sure you check with your doctor on using supplements for Raynaud's and even certain foods that you can eat that help with rain nodes. Like for example, beets. I eat a lot of beets, they're really good for rain nodes, they help with circulation. So you might wanna just look at some of the things that are out there outside the medical um, medication route and see if there's something that you might be interested in trying, but always check with your doctor to make sure that he's okay with you doing that. Next slide. Myth number nine, rain nodes is only an issue in cold climates and cold seasons. You know, it's very individualized, I have to say. I have rain nodes every day, every, uh, it doesn't matter what season I'm in. Um, any, expose to, any exposure to cold is gonna cause a problem. Again, I mentioned air conditioning. Sometimes just going from outside to inside, outdoors activities to inside can cause it. Swimming is a big one. Uh, holding a cold glass, you know, this can cause a major attack holding a cold glass. So if you can get, I mean, there's ways to get around that. Obviously they have cushions for the cuffs, use a straw 
anything to keep the coldness away from your hands because you don't want to have a ray nose attack. You want to try and control them. Any dramatic change in temperature can cause a painful attack. So attack. So you really want to look at your lifestyle and think some things you can control in the in the um, environment. Next slide. Myth number 10, Raynaud sufferers are likely to lose fingers or toes. And I have to say, you know, this is very rare. And there's a small probability that this will happen to patients with primary Raynaud's. In fact, less than 10% have serious conditions that have complications. Secondary conditions, which I've mentioned to you, can cause digital ulcers, and they are painful, and they can get infected, and there's antibiotics out there, but you, you as a patient, as an advocate for yourself, should tell the doctor when you think you're getting an ulcer so that he can get right on it and get your medication and get it covered so that no infection occurs. The last thing you want to do is get the infection down to the bone, and then that's when you have problems worrying about losing fingers. But again, it's very, very rare, and the probability is very small for primary they know it suffers. And then the last one is managed through avoidance techniques and lifestyle changes. So again, um, medication is good, and other stress relievers, know your triggers, and anything you need to change in your lifestyle. You know, maybe when you go out to a football game or whatever, you bring extra things with you. I have a heating pad upstairs and downstairs in my house where I can always just throw my fingers under a heating pad if I get cold. So just manage, manage your, t um, your attacks as best you can. Try and avoid things that are going to cause a trigger. And you can live a very good life with Raynaud's. You just have to uh, modify yourself a little bit. And it's very doable. And the modifications are not very dramatic. So I think that if you're up on it and you've spoken to your doctor and you've tried, you've combined both alternative and naturopathic remedies, you can actually do very well with brain nodes. And um, it's just, you know, even though we think it's a nuisance, it's a medical condition, but it needs to be addressed. Our next slide. So this is a little bit about our organization. And please, this is our, October is our Raynaud's Awareness Month. And there's no fee to be a member of our website. It's www.raynaud's.org. Um, I'm sorry, it's www.raynaud's.org. As a member, you will get a copy of our cold cuts newsletter and in there is great tips on what you can do to help with your rain nodes. There are some um, products that we've tried that we recommend. We have um, social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest and you can talk to fellow rain node sufferers. We have a lot of educational material and we give discounts on warming products. There's a toll-free number where you can reach Lynn Wonderman. She is the CEO and founder of rain nodes Association. She started with primary Raynaud's and she started a little group in her home and now Raynaud's has reached over 14,000 people and um, we have many, many new members joining every day. <clears throat> Next slide. So for more information, there's our website, www.raynaud's.org. You can make a donation that would be greatly appreciated. And we have 21,000 fo 21, followers on Facebook, 3,000 on Twitter. This was last year's statistics, but I'm sure it's even higher now. And there's a great discussion forum so you talk to other Frosties, as I mentioned. And um, at this time, I'd like to let anybody know that we are offering webinars. If there's any organization that needs a webinar for us to talk about Raynaud's, let us know. And I'm here to take questions now. Fantastic. Jan, thank you so much for the very thorough and I think empowering presentation. Although it, it's certainly a difficult syndrome or phenomenon to live with, what I always walk away with from presentations and from information from the Raynaud's Association is that there are steps people living with this can take to have a better quality of life. So as Jan said, we are going to transition to taking questions. Bear with me while before we do that, I switch to my PowerPoint slide deck 
because one of the things I want to talk to everybody about is just, again, turning to needy meds as a source of support. In particular, if you are looking for healthcare savings resources, you can find them again under that healthcare savings tab on the navigation tab on uh, tab navigational bar on our website needymeds.org. Um, this is actually a good time for me to mention that throughout Jan's presentation, she mentioned products that you may avail yourself of if you're living with this syndrome or phenomenon. She mentioned cup holders, heating pads, neck warmers. As in a matter of fact, throughout her presentation, we did get a few people asking for specific recommendations for products. So I wanna remind everybody that if you are having trouble affording medical equipment or medical supplies, get a prescription for what you need from your doctor and use the needy meds drug discount card and bring that to the pharmacy to see if you can save you can also check out the website my virtual doctor to shop for medical products and see if you can get a discount so check that out it's worth mentioning a um, couple of other things i want to mention before we get those questions to jan um, which is that here is the contact information for Raynaud's. Again, it's raynaud's.org, 1-800-280-8055, and you can shoot them an email with any questions to info at raynaud's.org. Of course, there's Needy Med's contact information on the bottom of the screen as well, and every, any questions regarding today's webinar, don't hesitate to reach out to me at Carla at NeedyMeds.org. So we're going to get to those questions coming in, and actually, Jan, I'm going to field one um, because one of the things that I just mentioned, we're getting a series of questions from webinar attendees about product suggestions. So what I'm going to do to make this easy, I'm just going to go ahead and put up the Raynaud's. Can you see um, your, your website, Jan? Yep. Great. So what I wanted to show everybody is, first of all, um, Jan did mention the number of followers they have on their social media platforms. Certainly check those out. But I really wanted to showcase their website. It is very easy to negotiate. Um, you'll find exactly what you need with just a few clicks of the mouse. As you can see, it's chock full of information. The particular resource I wanted to point out is go ahead and click on that Marketplace tab on that navigation bar, which is right on the top. And on the far right, you'll see a link to Marketplace. And this is where you can find all, a number of products that are recommended by Raynaud's Association to keep you warm and to make sure you can go ahead and increase that quality of life. So I wanted to take a moment to showcase that website because I really do think it's a great, great source of support and information. So another question coming in, and you did mention this, I believe, at the beginning of the presentation, but this will give you an opportunity to drive it home, which is, does Raynaud's just occur with your hands and feet? Right, right. So, um, no, as a matter of fact, it does not. Um, you can get it on any extremity. I've had Raynaud's on my ears, in my nose, my mouth, actually, my lips um, go through Raynaud's attacks. And um, so you can have a Raynaud's attack anywhere of an extremity. One thing I just did want to point, point out when back to the products, um, we've actually tested a, a lot of the products that we recommend. And one of the things that's not listed there, but I want to just call your attention to it. Um, I have heaters um, by my desk and I have one um, in the other area of my home. And when I was working in, um, in the office, I was allowed to have a heater as part of, you know, OSHA standards and for your within HR, they were able to change where I was sitting in my office so I could have a little bit more control over the, the heat and the cold. And so these are things when you're thinking about products that work, also look at your environment and what you're doing. So I spent a lot of time at my desk. So instead of always having to wear a lot of clothes, 
I might just put the heater on during an attack or keep it at a low temperature so that I don't have to worry about attack. So not just look at products, let's look at your environment that you're sitting in, where you spend most of your time and how you can accommodate yourself during the day and at night. That's really good advice. Thank you, Jan. Mm -hmm. Another question that came in was, we have an audience member that's sharing that they get really bad digital ulcers mm -hmm. and they're thinking this is due to Raynaud's. Do you have yes. any recommendations about this? Okay, so I've had digital ulcers since I was first diagnosed 20 years ago. And, um, you know, you should be on a medication, sildenafil or some kind of a, um, a beta blocker that will help get blood flow to the digital ulcers, but you have to be very careful with them um, that they do not become infected. Now, digital ulcers are different than regular ulcers. They heal from the inside out. So you may go through many scab formation on an ulcer before it actually heals. And this is the reason why you have to pay so close attention to them. So there is medication out there for digital ulcers. Again, know your triggers. Keep your, if you have an ulcer and it's opened, there is, I have a whole presentation on digital ulcers that I can send to Carly and we can put it as an attachment if you'd like. Um, and really keep an eye on the ulcers. Keep them um, hydrated, don't let them dry out. And um, I take pictures of mine and I will send them to my doctor. Some may need antibiotic regimen if they get infected, keep them clean. I would use saline and water on your ulcers and um, and just keep an eye on them. And especially if they're getting larger or if any of the surrounding area gets red. Thank you so much to our audience member for the question and to Jan for that thorough response. Um, as Jan has continued to stress throughout her presentation, one of the very first steps that you want to do is always reach out to your healthcare provider or doctor to get mm -hmm. the diagnosis that you need for medication prescriptions, as well as further suggestions. And Jan, we will follow up with this per this uh, audience member and be able to send this person um, the presentation or information specifically on digital ulcers. Thanks so yes. much for that. Great. Now, another question, actually, a number of people asked this. Um, you touched upon your experience with this a little bit. But I would imagine you get this question a lot, you personally, as well as those at Raynaud's Association, which is, if I move to a warmer climate, will my Raynaud's go away? Well, it, it does get better. I will say, remember, it's individualized, but I mine got better. I did notice a difference when I was, I was living in, in New Jersey and the seasons were just terrible for me. So I moved to Florida and it does, it does help, but you know, you have the air conditioning, you still have to handle. So, but I'm definitely better than I was when I was living in New Jersey, I had to wear layers of clothes during any months that had temperatures less than 60 degrees. So it does afford you more um, freedom. I guess I could use that word to live in a warmer client climate. But when you do something like that, you have to look at your support care system, who's around you, what will change. There's so much to look at if you're thinking about moving to a warmer climate. Do you have doctors that specialize in, the, in whatever you need? There's a whole list of things. So yes, it does help, but there's a lot of preparing that needs to go into it before you make a, you know, a decision like that. Thank you so much for the question and for the thorough answer. And I, I noticed the underlying theme in addition to contacting your medical provider um, or doctor is being aware of your surroundings, seeing if you can change things in your surroundings, and then taking the step to investigate products that may improve your quality of life. But that important, that important first step of uh, reaching out to your primary care physician. We're also getting some feedback um, with someone living with scleroderma um, and also saying it affects her, um, this person internally. Mm. Um, any, if that's something that you've heard of, Jan, and any suggestions for that? 
Yeah, so I actually go through periods where I get, I feel like I have a chill going through my body with the rain nodes. And, um, you know, if your core body temperature, you can, you can always check your temperature and you can check your pulse ox readings to see if there's anything that's really concerning. A pulse ox um, meter you can get in any pharmacy store or online. And it, what it does is it measures the amount of blood flow in, um, I'm sorry, the oxygen flow in your red cells. So um, if you're feeling that there's something going on internally, I would definitely get checked by a physician, get your pulse ox um, checked, your blood pressure, and um, go from there. As far as, you know, maybe I'm running a slight temperature, who knows what it could be. But when I have episodes like that, I, they come pretty consistent. Um, when I have them, I, I wrap myself in a blanket, put a hot, a hot heating pad on me, and I wait for the chill to go away. So important. Um, and when we um, talk about reaching out um, to get products, I, we pointed out the destination marketplace on Raynodes Association, Raynodes.org, their website. And I also talked about how you can hopefully get a discount on medical supplies or products through Needy Meds. But don't forget that Needy Meds is also here as a source of support if you're having difficulty affording any of your medications. You can simply visit NeedyMeds.org and type the drug name into the drug search bar on the top left-hand side, or you can reach out to one of our call center counselors at 1-800-503-6897, and the phone number is on the bottom right of my um, my slide on your screen right now. We are open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays. We're in Massachusetts, so that's East Coast time. One of the things I will mention is, um, Jan, we are getting a lot of feedback from audience members saying that they have moved to warmer cli climates. For example, somebody moved from Philadelphia to Phoenix, mm -hmm. and their feedback is that they found that the constant air conditioning really mm -hmm. is just as bad. So as Jan said, it goes back to making sure you're aware of your immediate surroundings and turning to those products or recommendations that your doctor suggests to you personally. So I do, we do our best. We got to pretty much all of the questions. If we didn't get a chance to answer your question, you will hear from us via email, but don't hesitate to reach out either to Raynodes or Needy Meds or either of our 1-800 toll-free numbers if you have any questions. We're here for you. Um, I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their day to join today's Needy Meds special topic web webinar, 10 Myths About Raynodes. And of course, a big thank you to my friend and colleague, Jan, for sharing her expertise with the Needy Meds audience. Thanks so much, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of the afternoon or morning, depending on where you are. Thank you.